Good morning, everybody. While we're waiting for more people to join us, uh, if you could open up a new tab, go to joinpd.com and put in the Misty Submarines Give Hilarious Bandanas code. And welcome to week two of science. And if you can't for some reason, open up a new tab or go to your uh, browser on your phone, which you should be able to on your phone. But if you're on some computer that doesn't have tabs, just watch. I'll show you everything you'll be doing on Pear Deck. But yeah, when you're on Zoom, if you're on a computer, you go up to the top, you can exit full screen because if it's full screen, it's covering your whole screen and you're like, ah, I can't go to my browser. But if you exit full screen, you can then open up your browser and um, go to joinpd.com and put in the Misty Submarines Give Hilarious Bandanas. Just the first letter. M-S-G-H-B. Good to see you all. Yeah, and thanks for having your camera turned on if you can uh, and using your real name because, you know, been a lot of Zoom bombing going on in the world and we don't want to be one of them. All right, we got four students connected. Yeah, if you're just joining us, uh, I just told everybody, if you're on a computer, and Zoom is full screen. If you move your cursor over th to the top of your screen, you should be able to exit full screen. And then go to your browser, to go to joinpd.com and put in the Pear Deck code. All right. Got another person coming in and another. And another. Yeah, so people are starting to come in a little late, but at least they're joining us. Yeah, it's been weird not being able to see you guys every day. It's a lot more fun having you all right in my class instead of only hearing from a few of you each day as you do your work and submit it and message me on ClassCraft. But at least we have ClassCraft to talk, sort of, message, not really talking, but you know, it's close enough. All right. So we got six of you connected to the Pear Deck. And we got one more person joined. All right, if you just joined, uh, I've explained that you can exit full screen on Zoom to join the Pear Deck that I've got started for you. So if you can exit full screen on Zoom, if you mouse over at the top, you'll see a exit full screen you can click on. Then you can go to a browser and go put in joinpd.com. And then the code is MSGHB, Misty Submarines Give Hilarious Bandanas. Hey, just like we did at CISPIS. Hello. Why are we muted? Uh, so you don't talk. Now, if you want to say something to the group, uh, you can message on the group chat or you can raise your hand. So you should have your uh, like emoji type things to say how you're feeling or you can raise your hand if you wanna be unmuted, if you have something to say that we all need to hear. Yeah, but that's why. Yeah, I can unmute whoever needs to speak. So we've got 
12 people here and eight of you are on the Pear Deck. So let me move over to the Pear Deck. Whoa. And see how we're doing. I'm going to start the class. And if anybody joins us late, I'll put the, ooh, yeah, let me put it in the chat. Oh, I got a hand raised. All right, so let's unmute Nigel, yes. Uh, like I said, if you exit full screen, you can go to your browser and you don't end the meeting or exit the meeting. Zoom is its own window, its own program, and your browser is a separate program. You can go back and forth. I can't hear you very well. F11, I don't know. I just know what I do is I exit full screen. Oh, Cody says yes. Thank you, Cody. Okay. Yeah, try it because it'd be nice. And if you can't get into the Pear Deck, you can always see it on my screen. I'll be showing you everything you'll be seeing. No, you can't do that. Oh. I'm the one who's sharing because it's I'm the one who's running the Pear Deck. Yeah, share screen is what the host does. Yeah, it's good to get used to Zoom because we're going to be Zooming every week for the rest of the year. And yeah, hopefully school will start up again in September like normal. I'm, I'm talking with CISPIS, so next year's sixth graders, hopefully we'll be able to go to CISPIS. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. So I'm going to put this information into the chat just in case anybody comes late they'll know what to do so i'm gonna write go to joinpd.com and use the code msghb msghb all right i'm gonna copy that because when somebody comes in i'll have to put it back into the chat. All right. So those are the instructions. Let's start to the class. Yeah, we got 10 of you in. So if you see the instructions there, you're going to drag the star in the middle to how you are feeling. Choose your emoji and the flag to either the cat chill, or I should say the chill cat, or the stressed person just to see how you are right now in this lovely morning that, yeah, looking out my window and it's eh, rain, not enjoyable, um, especially after all that sun we had. So I'm gonna give you a couple more seconds before I lock the screen and lock in. All right, let's see where everybody's at. All oh, right, we got a lot of flags on the chill cat. And let's see, we got some happy people. Oh, we got sad. Somebody's angry. Somebody's shy. We got an excited and an embarrassed. Oh, well, at least we got a lot of happy. And the rest of you, hopefully, we'll move you over to the happy part. I want to keep you away from the worried and the sad and the angry. Uh, but yeah, let's just get in our zen. And... Uh, Enjoy this Pear Deck. All right, moving right along. Uh, if you didn't know, today is Earth Day. So you can use the text tool or draw two things you already know about Earth Day. You've probably experienced Earth Day before. Let's go ahead and write what you, what you know or draw. So if you just joined, 
think I saw Rylan joining. Um, we're doing a pair deck. And I put the uh, code and what to do in the chat. And if you mouse, I think it's up at the top, uh, you'll be able to exit full screen. And once you exit full screen, uh, you can open up your browser, go to joinpd.com and use the code MSGHB. And do log in with your school Google account. All right, if you just joined us, uh, we're doing a group pair deck. And I've got the pair deck code in the chat room. I keep repasting it if you just joined, because I think if you just join, you don't get to see what was already in the chat. So those of you who are already in the chat, well, you'll see it over and over again. All right, and welcome to those of you who just joined. Yeah, the code for the Pear Deck, if you go to joinpd.com, is MSGHB, and it's in the chat. All right, while people are drawing, let's see what's going on. Oh yeah, trees and no plastic. <laughs> Earth Day is represented to let people know what cool things they can do. I know Earth Day people talk about cool outside nature stuff. There's a lot of that. That's certainly true. Oh yeah, nice Earth. People treat our planet like trash. They really do, don't they? People who do that are the trash on the planet. Ooh, right on. Show those people messing up our Earth. I mean, we're all in this together. Ooh, hashtag, we're all in this together, right? Planting, yes. Trash. People help clean the Earth, absolutely. Save animals too? Yes. You guys know your Earth Day stuff. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> oh, yeah, the recycle thing. Well done. It's a holiday. Yeah, Mr. G likes it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like the Earth. You know me, I'm Mr. Uh, Star Trek and everything and Star Wars. I like the idea of space travel and going to other planets, but until that happens, this is our only planet. I don't want to live on Mars. It's like dusty, small. It's only half the size of Earth. I don't want to live on the moon. It's one-sixth the size of the Earth. Plus, there aren't any trees. There's no oxygen. Boo. So, yeah, I like Earth and the Earth Day. Earth is about cleaning the Earth. Yeah. And that looks like a tree. People young and old clean up environments like coral reefs. Oh, yeah. Oceans, lakes, beaches, even sign petitions. So right. We have environmental protection protests. Yes. You guys know your stuff. And normally you'd walk around picking, yeah, about helping the environment. April 22nd. That's right. That's today. A lot of people do Earth Day and plant trees. All right. Well, those are excellent responses. So, hope you don't mind. Even if you do, I'm about to lock the screen. But first, we have a new participant. Hmm. Somebody whose name is Kelly. Does anybody know Kelly? Maybe it's a parent. Hope it's somebody we know. If you just came in, uh, we're doing a pair deck. I 
Let's see here. It's Emily Hill, thank you. All right, I wanna make sure it's not a Zoom bomber. I don't know, I mean, Zoom bombing is bad, but doesn't it sound like a cool phrase, Zoom bombing? I mean, I hate to say it, but it sounds cool, even though it's a horrible thing. And, and that's why we're taking extra precautions. What is Zoom bombing? Oh, good question. So, you know, with all this quarantine, Zoom and Google Hangouts meet became essential tools for doing this, for getting to have meetings and hold class. Well, there are some uh, hackers out there who they steal the Zoom link or they hack it and get passwords, especially when people share it through email. And then they go into your Zoom, take over the teacher or the whoever's hosting their screen and put all sorts of horrible stuff. I know, it. I don't know why hackers feel the need to do this, uh, but they're bad people. And so they take over Zooms and um, people have to stop. Yeah, it's, it's bad, bad for business, bad for school. So that's why we're making sure we don't get it. All right, so Earth Day, April 22nd, today. Um, this slide has a link to, if you haven't been to the Earth Day uh, website, I'm gonna, once this Zoom is over, this Pear Deck, I'm gonna leave it on student pace mode so you can go back and get the links because you really should read through this, all the cool stuff it has on there. All those dots represent Earth Day events going on around the entire Earth. So it's, it's really cool to see that we're all in this together. It's got the history of Earth Day. And for those of you who didn't know, today is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. It started in 1970. Um, so yeah, it's been around for 50 years. And in that time, we've done a lot of good stuff. And by we, I mean the human race. You know, there may be a lot of bad going on, but there's also a lot of good. Yeah, so there's both the rude going on and the bad. You know, Cody, yeah, the human race has to clean up the earth because like I said, we're stuck here. We're stuck here for a while. Even if a few people go to Mars, that's not gonna be a great uh, second home. So for those of you who are keeping up with your, whoa, what happened? With your quests, um, hopefully by today you're, or, or this week, if you haven't finished your hydrodynamics and public service announcement, keep working on it because that's also part of our Earth Day work. We do a lot for Earth Day, uh, starting with hydrodynamics, but think like a scientist is the new one that launched this week. And it's gonna take you to fact or fake and can you spot uh, the fake story. Very important skills you have to have in this age because you're bombarded with news and social media and stories that you're like, whoa, is that true? And if you go around and share it and it's not true, eek, that's not cool. So that's why we're learning this and doing this for Earth Day. And then once you finish that, you're going to get to put a heart around the climate change quest uh, because we got to learn about climate change. I want to see what you know, and I've got a great set of videos for you that'll take you through what we would have done in class. So it's almost like we're there. That's what I'm hoping for. And yeah, if you can't get in contact with your teammates, I've been telling everybody, just keep going on your own. You got stuff at home. I've seen some great things that people are making. They're putting it on the Flipgrid. Go to the Flipgrid, share what you've made. Share your prototype. Um, it's really cool. So keep working on your public. We've got four public service announcements already and I'm slowly sharing them uh, on Twitter and on Facebook because I want people to read. That's one of the Earth Day acts is share what you learn, 
educate other people. That's where we come in, the sixth grade science class. Yeah, and again, if you can't get a hold of your teammates, don't, don't worry. Plus, look who's on right now. Those are people you can uh, work with. On Classcraft, I've got discussion forums turned on. So check those assignments over and over again. Read what people are posting, post things. If you need help, it's not just me. Help each other. So that's where we're at. And it looks like, yeah, we've only got only two people think that's the coolest thing ever. Really? Come on. That is the coolest thing ever. That's all right. Six of you think it's cool. <laughs> if you're thinking the only choice you have is it's cool, well, of course, what other choice is there? All right. So if you've done Think Like a Scientist, shh, don't give anything away. Um, but if you haven't, let me give you a preview. So this website there, plus I have a video four or five videos, you got to watch them in order. The first thing you're going to learn about, I mean, this website is amazing. It teaches us about a creature most people don't know about. Did you know we had octopi who live on trees? I know, right? This website is how to, it's endangered because, you know, people keep cutting down forests and they're very fragile, so if you mess with them, they die and all this stuff. So you got to be careful with these poor creatures. Now, let's say you read a website like this, and you're like, oh, my goodness. So I can just go. See, this is the Hood Canal. Um, this is right there, this little kind of dinosaur head. Chimicum is right about here where I have my cursor. So if you go down into the Quilcene Brennan area, and you go into those woods there, that's where you find the Pacific Northwest tree octopus. But wait, Cody says, that's not true. What do you mean that's not true? Here's a website right here saying it's true. Is the website lying? They need water. So wait a minute, in your mind you're thinking, how could an octopus live in a tree when it needs water. Uh -huh. So if you ever, <clears throat> let's say somebody shares something with you on Snapchat or whatever social media, or you hear it in the news, or you see a video, yes, it's called hoaxes, fake news. I've been listening to this, um, podcasts about deep fakes. Any of you know what a deep fake is? Well, I'll tell you, if you don't know what a deep fake is, uh, so you've already heard of fake news. This is an example of a hoax. I think it was 1997. The guy who created this website just created it to show the world anybody can put anything on the internet and it doesn't have to be true. There's nobody checking every single website. Well, that was 1997. Now, fake news has become way worse. Uh, and deep fakes are when you take a video, let's take our president, and you manipulate the video to make him say something he never really said. They've been doing that. So you can't trust websites. You can't trust videos. We know we can't trust photos. You've heard the Photoshop thing where people get airbrushed and made to look perfect. So everything that you see, hear, or read can be faked. And I've got a raised hand. So let's unmute. Da, 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 da. Anya. All right, Anya. I'm confused. Is the octopus really real? And does it live in a tree or is this fake? Well, what do you think? Did Not you look yet. it up? Not yet. Ah, so that's what you have to do. Once you find something, even if your teacher gave it to you, 
I gave you this website to read, but if you notice the assignment was to prove, you can't trust everything you read on the internet. So I know Camden, he looked it up, and some of you did too. And first thing you look up when you type up North Pacific Northwest tree octopus is it's a hoax. Like I said, the guy created the website back in 1997 to show people you can make a website that looks really good, really factual, and it's not. It's totally fake. So Anya, complete hoax. There's no such thing as a Pacific Northwest tree octopus. And yet this website fooled people because you want to trust. A lot of us are, are trusting. So that's just a preview of this scientific thinking assignment. There are two other. So the first one is a full-blown hoax. The second one uh, is totally true. Everything you're going to read on the second website is true, but they mislead you by leaving out a very important piece of information. I know Ethan already went through it, so don't give it away to every, anybody. Um, and Nigel's going to get it right away once he goes to it. Can't wait till you read that website, Nigel. You probably already have. Um, but the rest of you, read through the website, go through the frequently asked questions, and know that it's all true. But what is the trick? What is the fact that you're missing that's going to make you go, oh, when you figure it out, you'll see what I mean. And then the third one is a, a deep fake type video, which is old. Uh, but they did this video and it went viral like they wanted it to, but people actually believed it was a real thing. And it, you know, spoiler, it wasn't. Uh, so that's what this assignment is all about. So in order to start our climate change study, you have to learn to tell fact from fiction. So that's why on the quests, it's going to take you through this scientific thinking, and then you'll take some quizzes on is it fact or is it fiction. All right, so I just had to let you know so you can do that because I, I'm excited for you to, to learn from this wonderful activity. And then the climate change started this week because honestly, the videos I have for you, they are great and they teach you the science in a very understandable way. It's not hard or, or mysterious because science shouldn't be, especially when it's important like saving our planet. But let's watch this video. I'm hoping you'll be able to hear it, but let's try it. And if not, you'll just have to play it at home. Nearly 50 years ago, Earth Day became the largest people's protest in the history of the world. And we changed the world for the better by creating clean air and clean water laws with the help of scientists and policy leaders and the people's movement that couldn't be stopped. Today's environmental threats of extreme climate change and pollution to our air and water feel overwhelming. But fortunately, we're developing the world's most accessible and transparent citizen science database portal ever created. It's called Earth Challenge 2020. And it will allow everyone and anyone to help document the environmental conditions of their community and provide critical information on the threats and the opportunities to make our cities and neighborhoods healthier for people and for all living things. Join us and be a part of the solution. Learn more at earthday.org. All right, so that video, what I'm gonna do uh, during this Zoom meeting and this Pear Deck is give you ways you can participate in, in the Earth Challenge 2020, especially because it's the 50th anniversary, plus everything we're gonna do for the rest of the year, climate change, ocean acidification, the uh, hydrodynamics, it's all giving you the, the knowledge and the skills you need to save your planet. But one of the things they have on this website, the Earth Challenge 2020, is uh, there's an app, which I just downloaded yesterday. It's called the Earth Challenge 2020 app. And if you have a phone, if you don't, then, then you can't do this. But uh, you can download the app, and it's called Citizen Science. 
So if you're looking at my screen, um, it's a citizen science initiative. That means we can participate in, in helping uh, scientists by giving them data. Remember, science has to analyze data. That's how math and science work together. That's just one way. Um, but this citizen science, so there's the video I just showed if you're looking at my screen. Um, get the app if you can. And it looks like this. And here's what we could do here. If you get to go out, because I know we live in a wonderful area, we can go out and walk around our streets and not run into people. We can keep six to eight feet apart so we don't catch or spread uh, COVID-19. But this app will allow you to take pictures of plastic pollution and send it to them so they can keep track of where there is plastic pollution all over the earth. There's also an air quality one that I didn't get to try out, but I'm gonna do it. And if you can, you can do it too. And you can be part of the Earth Challenge 2020. So this is one way you can do that, um, which is pretty cool, I think. And it seems like something that anyone who has a phone can do. Yeah, I know, COVID-19, nobody wants to risk that. Um, ocean acidification, Cody, is the assignment you're going to do after climate change. It's really a sad thing. Um, but with every sad thing that's happening on Earth, I show you how to solve it too. So don't worry, more to come. So like I said earlier, this Pear Deck, I'm going to turn into student pay so you can come back and go through it a little slower. But I want to show you something else. I want to know who, who uh, can do this one. Here's another way you can help the earth, believe it or not, the food you eat. You're like, what? Yeah, watch this. I thought this video was interesting. I want to see what you think. My kids like to play a lot of different sports, hockey, soccer. My nephew likes to play baseball. My son plays flag football. My kids just want to play. But our forests are burning. Our rivers are polluting. Whoa, can you believe that? So I know uh, this is something that some people are like, no way, I'm not giving up meat. While some people are like, I already kind of do have a mostly plant-based diet. But most people don't know. The meat we eat is part of the problem. And you'll learn more when you do the climate change uh, quest assignment on Classcraft. Yeah, caged animals spread viruses. I mean, corona came from people eating bats. Mad cow disease, the bird flu, all came from the animals we cage to turn into food. Uh, so we're getting diseases from the way we treat animals. Because when I go running down West Valley Road, I look at the farms here and those are happy cows. I see happy chickens. They're not caged. They're not force-fed food that's bad for them. They're just out on the grass, happy. That's how food should be treated. If your food's happy, and with no hormones and no antibiotics, it's better for you. But, but <laughs> that's not how it works in uh, many places. So food, that's something we got to think about. So there's another thing you could do. And, and you could write a blog post on this. Believe me, I will share it far and wide, like the public service announcement. And thank you for those of you who've already done it. Um, I'm sharing it far and wide so people can learn from you because people like to learn from kids. Here's another thing. I know some of you mentioned you're doing some gardening. Uh, oh my goodness, bees, right? The most important thing on the earth for food, especially plant-based diets. So if you go to this website, and you scroll right down just a little bit, pollinator favorites, they give you what you should plant. Something called alyssum, basil, the butterfly bush, fennel, lavender, marigold, oregano, verbena, and yarrow. If you plant those in your backyard, in your little gardens, um, 
you help the butterflies and the bees. We have to keep them healthy and alive. Uh, and yeah, and Nigel wrote the plant meats. There's a lot more plant-based meats being sold out there because people are trying. They're trying to save our planet. So for those of you who are into gardening, yeah, I, I gave you this website. And look, you can even sign up to commit to planting a pollinator garden. If you do sign up for anything on the Earth Day site, ask your parents for permission. Always do that. It's good practice. Ah, and then of course, I know a lot of you have been focusing on plastic pollution with your hydrodynamics challenge. Plus, I love your uh, your your prototypes. Um, bees always follow my hat because it looks like a flower. <laughs> And then uh, Avery, do you have your hand up? You want to be unmuted? Because I can't read your post-it. Let me unmute you. What are you trying to say? Nothing. Oh, okay. I thought you uh, were telling us something. So this website, if you scroll down, I know it's kind of cool. You might want to share that on a blog post. Uh, it has two charts where you're going to estimate how much plastic do you use a day or a month. Now, I got to say, I don't buy a lot of plastic bottle stuff, so I would do zeros on these. I don't use plastic cups or plastic straws and cotton swabs. I mean, really, you buy a big thing, it lasts us for months. So, and I don't smoke. And plastic bags, I use paper bags mostly. So this I'm pretty good at. I don't use plastic, silverware. Now, food containers, a lot of our food is wrapped in public. So let's say one a day. Ah, that's 365 a year. Let's say I, I commit to cutting down 65. Okay. Then it calculates that for me. This one's a bit more appropriate. It's how much do you use a month? Well, we might have 10 food things that are fully packaged in plastic a month or let's say 20. So I want to go down by 100 a year. Plastic bags, we don't use plastic bags a lot, but we might get a few trips. Uh, oh, no, not 20. Say about two. Well, let's say five. I want to go down by half. Let's say 30. Cleaning containers, we might buy one or two a month. I want to reduce that. So the third column is how much you want to reduce your use of plastic. Now, I don't buy, I buy a toothbrush once every six months. So I can say, cut that by half. Toothpaste, I buy about one a month. Okay, I can't buy less toothpaste. Medicine, I only get one a month. We don't have diapers. And yeah, you know, feminine products in, our, in every household with women, you gotta have those. Um, so here, it generates for you your total yearly personal reduction. It gives you a number of how much plastic you can reduce in your house, in your life, in one year. Pretty cool, huh? I've never seen anything like that. So I shared that with everybody so you can be like, oh, all right, now I can put it into numbers. Because here's what they say. How do you know how much you're going to reduce if you don't have an idea of how much you use? I kind of rhymed it. <laughs> so that's the plastic calculator. And again, you can come back to this later when I turn on student paste mode. Oh, so we got, uh, yeah, Nigel says we've been bees. Oh, yeah, they die during the winter. That is sad. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of people, my neighbor here uh, had a beehive and they died during one winter. And um, at the high school, they have a beehive out in our field and I hope the bees are doing okay. I haven't checked on them in a long time. Um, but this next couple of slides, I have these cool uh, PDFs for you that if you click on, you can see there's one called um, protect your water quality because you know what? We never did our water quality testing, but uh, I still want to get data for this year. So one of these next Zooms, I'm just going to Zoom on the way down to the creek because I'm going to get data. 
I brought from the classroom one of the uh, data collection devices and I, I've got the probes in class. So probably May, I'll go down to the creek and get data for you so we can see how our creek is doing. We have a creek right next to us, so that's how we can protect our watershed. And I thought this was a great poster of all the things you can do uh, to protect water quality. Well, you can probably, yeah, if you stay six feet away, you can uh, watch from a distance, but we'll be zooming so to keep social distancing. So that's act on climate change. And then the next one, actions for the planet during the pandemic, because, you know, climate change is all about getting out, or scratch that, Earth Day. Earth Day is all about getting out there, picking up trash, working together. But now we have to be six to eight feet apart and we can't collect in groups or the virus just spreads like crazy. I mean, think about how many of you caught the flu this year. You don't want to catch COVID-19 because you can spread it to your family and that could really in infect people. If hey, you got any lung issues, COVID is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Um, so this document here, nope, not that one. This one. Here are the tests we normally do every year and uh, these are the tests I'm gonna do. So we're gonna do pH and this tells you a little bit about pH. I'm gonna do turbidity, temperature. I don't do salinity. I do dissolved oxygen and I can't do nitrogen and phosphorus anymore. Uh, so, and I do flow rate. And this is a great infographic on where the pollution comes from. We learn a lot from water quality testing and we're still going to learn because that's what we do. Now, once you finish your scientific thinking assignment, you're going to get to climate change. Oh, I'm so excited for you to get there. Uh, there's a link on that uh, assignment to Climate Change 101 playlist. Watch those videos in order. And when you get to video 13, watch this, because this explains something about climate change and why people don't believe it. It's a great uh, uh, video, too. Um, you're you're going to really enjoy it. But watch as many videos as you can a day, you know, just a few a day so you can get through it and um, learn as much as you can. I'm really excited for you guys uh, doing that. So let's see how we're doing here. One person has already unlocked the climate change assignment. Yeah. One person says, not yet. I'm going to start scientific thinking today. Mm. So the rest of you, there we go. People are voting. I'm almost there. I just need to finish scientific thinking. We got two. All right, so lock in your answers in three, two, one. Boom. All right, let's see how it looks. Six people are going to start scientific thinking today. Yes, way to go. Uh, three are almost there and two have unlocked it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So <clears throat> that's really all I had for you today. Uh, I'm glad you all joined me. I'm going to share the recording of this for those who couldn't make it. But next week's Zoom is really special for science. We're going to do it at Thursday at 1230. And we're going to have a guest presenter from the North Olympic Salmon Coalition. Uh, it's not this young lady there. She was la the last year's. This year we got a new one. Her name is Ryan. And um, it's about benthic macroinvertebrates. See that cool uh, stonefly larva there? You're gonna learn about those. And, and we were gonna do it together face to face in class. Of course, we can't now, but she's gonna come to you live via Zoom Thursday, next Thursday, not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, she's not ready yet. Uh, next Thursday at um, 12.30. Let's see, what pets do you have? Pets, I got two cats, one dog. Cute little mini pit bull and uh, a Siamese and a, a, a Maine Coon. 
So nice, big fat cat. <laughs> All right, we got a hand raised. Let me go over to Riley. All right, yes, you're on. Um, don't we, why Thursday though? Cause don't we have Zooms on Wednesday for your class or whatever? We do, but I was kind of told Wednesdays might be used for uh, staff meetings. So I was kind of asked if I could change it. Uh, so I changed it for next week, just in case Thursday will be staff meeting. So I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to keep Wednesdays or if I'm going to keep Thursdays, but in the next few weeks, we'll know if I'm going to be Wednesdays at 11 or Thursdays at 1230. But next week for sure, let's try Thursday at 1230. Okay. Ryan said she can do it. Yeah, that was a great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, mm -hmm. And who else? I thought I saw another hand. Was there another hand? Okay, Anya. So let's unmute Anya. Go ahead, Anya. You're on. Um, okay, I kind of forgot what I was going to ask. Oops, sorry. Uh, here's something I tell you about Maine Coons. Um, the Maine Coons that are, um, I got some neighbors that have Maine Coons at their house, and their Maine Coons are kind of grumpy. <laughs> Ours is too. He's got the grumpy face. Yeah, because his kind of does that. <laughs> so, yeah, that is a Maine Coon thing, but uh, they're adorable. Also, answer the question. Say again. Do I have to answer the question? Because there's a question that you can answer um, saying, I plan on being there. Yes, please. That would be great. I don't okay. So let's see how we're doing. All right. And so far, we've heard from seven people plan on being there. Eight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So sorry about the schedule change. Like I was telling you earlier, thanks to Riley's question. It's just because um, the elementary school is trying to get a schedule for the whole school. And they're trying to plan everybody. All right, so we got nine people plan on, 10 people plan on being there, and one's gonna clear up their schedule and make it. Okay, so here's a, uh, this last slide, this is the last slide. You made it to the end of today's Zoom and you're still alive. It's about biomonitoring. Uh, and this is the document, the PDF that is linked there. So if you want, you can learn a little bit from this short, Okay, it's a little longer than the last one. Uh, PDF file about benthic macroinvertebrates. So when Ryan from North Olympic Salmon Coalition does her uh, lesson on Thursday next week, not tomorrow, you can know a little bit about it and, and totally um, show off your, your knowledge. Um, and the time again is 1230. And I know they wanted us to do our Zooms afternoon because 9 to 11 is when the buses drop off food and when parents go to the school to pick up paper packets and stuff. Um, so that's why they wanted us to do stuff after noon. Because, um, yeah, right now, 11, it's almost 12. The buses are just finishing up delivering all their stuff. So that's why. They did it that way. So yeah, this is a great document. And you know, if you read through this and you're like, I don't get it, ah, don't worry. That's what Ryan's gonna teach you next Thursday. All right, so I'm going to turn, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go back to here. I'm going to change the Pear Deck to student paste. And now I'm gonna keep it student paced uh, for, I don't know, for a long time. So those who weren't here today can join. And so you can go to any slide, click on any website because there's great stuff here for you to do to save your planet. Um, and then I'm just gonna leave it on and open. 
probably till the end of the year. I mean, why not, right? Uh, but for now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see your faces here. And let's see. All right. So before we end, because that's it. That's what I have for you. Uh, are there any last, oh, nice cat, Emily. Are there any last minute questions or anything you want to say for the good of the order? Nope. Is that a hand up, uh, Riley? Or are you just waving? <laughs> I can't tell. Oh, I see a raised hand. Avery, I'm going to unmute you. Go for it. Can't hear you, Avery. All right, well, maybe Avery couldn't talk. Anybody else? It's great seeing you, you know, looking at all your Zoom uh, faces like that. It's almost like we're in class. Not really. But, you know, it's nice. I, I really am happy to see you all. I wish we could be together. I really, really do. I miss you guys. All right. So if there's nothing else, um, I'm going to be ending the meeting in a few seconds. <laughs> I like Ethan's questions. Why are we still in pajamas? That's the beauty about distance learning and Zooming. You could be in your pajamas. I'm in my sweats. I'm wearing a t-shirt. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's a few little bitty nice things about this. Um, yeah, not having to get dressed. I don't have to wake up at five every day. I do miss our Minecraft um, games. A lot more people playing when we were at school. Oh, yeah, some of you got dressed. I think it's a great idea. I do get dressed when um, it's time to go grocery shopping. We try to do that once or twice a week. I wear a mask. Have any of you been wearing masks? Yeah, yeah. I, I, we got to be safe, you know. Esports is sometimes crowded. I don't know if those of you knew, but last Friday we had a big tournament. We had four of our esports club members play, and then we had to have a sub. Uh, Logan's brother subbed. So, but if any of you can play Minecraft, I can take in more. Lillian, I see your hand up. You want to? I'm going to unmute you. Go, Lillian. Minecraft? Absolutely. Minecraft is great for distance learning. Uh, we've been trying Education Edition a little bit, but mostly we've been playing the Java. We get on the CompMC server um, for sure Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, we did a tournament. We lost, but it was great experience, and I love seeing it. I've got it all recorded. Um, so, yeah. Anybody who's interested in Minecraft, we're still doing it. So yeah, let me know. Message me on Classcraft because I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. All right. So with that, I will say to all of you, have a great day. And I'm going to end the meeting. Bye-bye. And have a good Earth Day. Celebrate.